Hey guys, and welcome to this video on recurrence relations. So here we want to solve the following recurrence relation. And I have that recurrence relation in the green rectangle. First, we have our base case that states that t of 0 is equal to c subscript 1. So c subscript 1 is just a constant value. And our function, of course, is t. And it's taking in some parameter value, which is 0. Next, right under it, we have our recursive case, which states that t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus c subscript 2. Now c subscript 2 is also another constant and it could or could not be equal to c subscript 1. Okay, so that's basically it for our recurrence relation. So let's go ahead and get started to try and solve this. So we're going to need two things. First we're going to need the, uh, we're going to need a column for iterations and then we're going to need a column for our function t of n. So I'm going to use k to represent the number of iterations for our first column. And then we're going to have t of n for our function column. Okay. And now on the first iteration, so that means that k equals 1, since this is our first iteration, our function t of n is going to be what we have up top there. So we're just going to rewrite the function. So we get t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus c subscript 2. Okay? And now to go to the next iteration, we need to know what does t of n minus 1 equal. And that's easy enough to figure out. So we're going to go to the side here. All we have to do is plug in n minus 1 into our original function. So we get t of n minus 1 is equal to t of n minus 1 minus 1 plus c subscript 2. And now if we simplify this, we get t of n minus 2 plus c subscript 2. So now we can go back to our function, and this again is our second iteration, and we can say t of n is equal to Instead of saying t of n minus 1 here, like we have up top, we can now replace that with the t of n minus 2 plus c2 from what we just figured out on the right. So we get t of n minus 2 plus c subscript 2 plus c subscript 2. Now that second c subscript 2 that's from here. So those are the same two, const, uh, same two constants there. All right. So now to go to the next iteration, this would be our third iteration. We need to know what is t of n minus 2. And to do that, we basically do the same thing. We're just going to plug in n minus 2 this time into our original equation. So we get t of or function, so we get t of n minus 2 is equal to t of n minus 2 minus 1 plus c subscript 2. Now this, if we simplify it, is equal to t of n minus 3 plus c subscript 2. And just like before, that means that we can substitute t of n minus 2 for t of n minus 3 plus c subscript 2. So now our function looks like the following. We get t of n is equal to t of n minus 3 plus c2 plus c2 plus c2. Okay. And the c2 here, here, and here are all the same. And then the C2 from here is right there. Okay. So let's get rid of those lines. All right. So I can already see a pattern here. So we need to, you know, we're basically trying to find a pattern. That's why we're doing this. And so I can see a what we call the general form. So I'm going to just put dot, dot, dot here. 
and I can see for whatever value that we're going to call k, our function, I'm going to put some dots here as well, our function t of n is equal to t of n minus k plus k times c subscript 2. Okay, so where did I get this from? How did I figure this out? All right, so I'm going to erase the right-hand side here and make it a little bit more clear and obvious. Okay, so in our first iteration, k is equal to 1, and we get t of n minus 1 plus 1 times c subscript 2, right? They're still equivalent. In the second iteration, we get t of n minus 2, I'll write that a little bit better, plus c subscript 2 plus c subscript 2, which is 2 times c subscript 2. And then in the third iteration, we get t of n minus 3 plus c subscript 2 plus c subscript 2 plus c subscript 2. Well, that's just 3 times c subscript 2. Okay, and then so that's where I got the k values from. Uh, in the general form, you can see we just substitute those numbers, which are the numbers of uh, the numbers from the iteration column, and we can just substitute k in for that. Okay. So let's go ahead and erase this. We um, need to know when this recurrence relation is going to stop. And I'm going to actually rewrite this general form first. I'm going to write up top. So t of n is equal to t of n minus k plus k times c subscript 2. Okay, and again, like I said, we need to know when this is going to stop. Well, we do know when it's going to stop. It's going to stop when it hits the base case, of course. And so when does it hit the base case? It hits the base case when our value n is equal to 0. And then, of course, the outcome is c subscript 1. So what that means is, that means that we want, I'm going to use uh, the blue color here. What we want is t of n minus k to equal t of 0, right? And then t of 0, of course, from above is equal to c subscript 1. Well, how do we get that, right? So this right here implies that n minus k needs to equal 0. And then, of course, that means that n is equal to k. So we need our k value to be equal to n in order to get our base case. And this is good because we want our equation or our function in terms of n anyways. So wherever we see k now, we can substitute the value or the variable n in, uh, in for it. All right, so I'm going to erase this. And what we're going to do is rewrite our general form again, this time substituting in the value or variable n for k. So now we get t of n minus n plus n times c subscript 2. All right, now what we can do is we can simplify this. So we get t of 0 plus n times c subscript 2. And this is equal to c subscript 1 plus n times c subscript 2. And now we have solved our recurrence relation. And we want to use something like proof by induction to, to prove that this is true. And um, if you want to know the big O running time of this function here, I have lots of videos on big O on how to do this. Uh, you can definitely see it. Um, I'll put some links. Uh, showing how to solve big O and big Omega, big theta. But 
basically our equation t of n which is equal to n times c subscript 2 plus c1 now that's just me reordering the equation from above this belongs to big O of n okay So again, how do I know that? Well, I've ha had a lot of practice with uh, Big O. And again, I will leave links on videos on how to solve for Big O. And I make it very simple and very easy for you to understand. So be sure to check those out. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. And please leave likes, comments, and questions. Um, and I try my best to answer them. And as always, guys, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.